Well, let's get right into it. Would you welcome to the stage Jenny Cox? Come on up. Good morning. Have a seat. Jenny, share with us an introduction of who you are, your family, and then the suffering that you were living with for years. And then we'll get into that, that day that God healed you and then what your life has been like since. Well, good morning. I am Jenny Cox. And up on the screen, you'll see a picture of, I'm a little biased, but my family. Uh, I have the best. Um, I have my husband, Rick. Uh, we have, next to him, there's Emily. And then behind me is Will. Um, a lot of you would know Will. Cowboy hat, comes by it naturally. Um, in front of him is my daughter, Ashley, and beside her is her husband, uh, Sergeant Stouffer. He is a combat medic in the Army. So he and Ashley are currently stationed in Kentucky. Um, and so we've got the two littles that are in front. They're CJ and, and Brookie, and uh, they are just an incredible bunch. Um, the two that are not present are Savannah and RJ. Um, they are in heaven waiting for me one day. Um, RJ, um, we'll get into that a little bit um, later on in the story, but um, he actually passed because of the autoimmunity that we're gonna talk about today that God healed me of. Um, so he was 23 weeks gestation when he passed away. So. Um, but I am currently in school um, at Chesapeake College finishing my associate's degree in human services with a cert certificate in addiction. Um, my concentration is in mental health. Um, currently with my husband, I lead a blaze here at Calvary. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, many of you are parents of the kids that we have in there, absolutely amazing. Um, so, for those of you that are not familiar with Ablaze, Ablaze is a ministry that is designed specifically for 5th and 6th graders here at Calvary. And we meet every Sunday morning, 11 o'clock service, and then every third Friday we have what we like to call Ablaze at Night, where that just gives us a chance to have better connections with the kids, build trust in those friendships. So, um, like I said, um, you know, with the, the autoimmunity, uh, I started having issues when I was a child. Um, I was constantly falling. They weren't quite sure if I was just clumsy or what was going on. Um, broke several bones, had to have surgery even um, with one of those falls. And by the time I was 10 years old, I ended up having these massive rashes um, all over my body. Um, the best way that I can really describe it is basically being on fire on the inside out. Um, what these were caused from was the vasculitis that was ravaging my body where the, uh, it, the blood vessels in my body would become inflamed so much that they would burst. Um, and so I would have those, um, like I said, all over my body. I could feel them coming before they even appeared on my skin. Um, along with that, you know, best way I can describe it also, just the, the pain that I had, the nerve pain that came with that was if you sit on your leg long enough and it goes to sleep, and then you start having it wake up, that tingling, how you can times that by about 100 is pretty much what I lived with. Um, and I dealt with that on a daily basis. Um, growing up, uh, we didn't really know what was going on. Um, I was actually at one point diagnosed with lupus and was on a series of medications for that. They did absolutely nothing. Um, and you know, went through a lot of different times where people were telling me that I was sick because it was in my head. Um, nobody could figure out what was going on with me, so it had to have been just something I was conjuring up um, for attention or just wanting to, you know, be sick, which doesn't make any sense to me. But um, in 2016, um, I got really, really ill, and um, to the point where my husband was afraid that I was going to pass away. Um, we could not see any of my facial features. All of the blood vessels had pretty much burst in my face, um, clear down into my chest. So we spent the weekend at Johns Hopkins um, and was able to finally be diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis. Now this one is an inflammation of my spine. And what this was causing was massive joint pain. Um, 
from you know even the small ones like in your fingers. So every joint in my body was inflamed um, to the point really it's just it's almost like a a, a bubble. Like if, if just if it would just burst, it would feel better. Um, so I had that throughout my entire body, um, and with the vasculitis, that was soothed with rest. Um, but the ankylosing spondylitis was soothed with activity. So I had both of them raging at the exact same time, which meant that on a daily basis, I had to decide what pain I was mentally capable of handling that day. Um, my day usually started with my husband, you know, waking up for work, I'd get up with him, but it would take me about an hour or so to actually get up out of bed um, before I could get through, um, you know, the pain first. I would wake up in pain. Um, that would start about a six, um, if I'm being modest, that's on a good day. And um, I would have so much of the the stiffness that I could not move my body by myself. My husband would roll me over just so I could go on my side. So um, I would just take the time to kind of, you know, do some exercises, my own physical therapy at home, kind of get my body going, and, um, you know, pretty much decide what, what pain I was going to conquer that day. Um, my children um, and my husband had to help me with even the simplest of things. Um, you know, as I got older, the mobility got worse, um, and it got to a point where I couldn't bake, which I love. Um, I love to bake, I love to cook, um, couldn't do anything outside. Um, any chores had to be, you know, divvied up along my kids, and um, they had to help me up the stairs, had to do my laundry. So usually it's, I would like it to be the other way around where I could do my kids' laundry. But as you could see, Brookie, you know, and, and CJ being as young as they are, and I was teaching them through the older kids how to do their laundry because mommy couldn't. Um, so, you know, they helped me through, you know, a lot of that. Um, none of my kids were able to see me run. They've never been able to see me walk down the street. We've never been able to go on, you know, walks together, let alone a hike. Or um, we've been on very little vacations. And when we did go anywhere, I would have to use the scooter um, to get around anywhere. Um, I would use a cane if I wasn't using my husband's arm or my son's. And um, going back to, you know having to choose what pain I was going to have, my hope is that when people hear my story and they hear that when I say that I love you, just truly what that means, because I had to make a conscious choice of whatever I was going to do every single day, at every moment of my day. Um, I was able to do very little, and so what I did choose to do I was very diligent, and so I absolutely love to serve. I love to serve people of, of many kinds, but those of you that have your kids in a blaze, I hope that you know that my heart is completely devoted to them. And when I come and I serve on Sunday mornings, a lot of people don't recognize just what my service means to me and, what, and the effect that it has. Um, Sundays typically would, you know, go my morning routine. I would come in the morning and I would give my absolute best to each and every one of those kids and make them feel like they were loved, help them to know that they're valued and that I love them just like I love my own kids. So I would serve them every single day and cry on the way home because the pain was so bad and I would spend the next three days in my bed because I couldn't do anything. Um, there are times where I would go and I would just, you know, I had things I had to do. And so again, I would have one of my kids go with me and I would use my scooter um, just to do it, just about anything. Um, but uh, I love serving people and I wasn't gonna allow what physical disability I had stopped me from doing the will of God. And as I, I grew in my faith in him, I would tell God all the time, if you heal me, I'm going to serve you. But if you choose not to heal me, I'm still going to serve you and I'm going to serve these kids. That's good.
Praise God. What else has the doctor diagnosed you with or what have you discovered happened because of yeah. the inflammation? So recently, um, I've been, I was diagnosed with scoliosis. Uh, the pressure that was placed on my spine from the ankylosing shifted my spine um, 6.8 degrees, um, which was adding to the pain that I already had. Um, I had a rare synovial cyst um, on my T3, T4 that was rare just because of my age, but then also just the placement of it. It just wasn't something that they saw typically. I tried to have that surgically removed and the surgeons were unable to do so. Um, I was told going into that surgery that if they did remove it, it would return because of the fluid that was flowing through my faucet joints. Um, it would just be something I would have to live with um, for the remainder of my life. Um, I also had this massive mass that nobody really knew what it was um, that was just above my right SI joint. Um, this one was so large that this really diminished a lot of my mobility. Um, every time I, I took a step down, it literally felt like somebody was driving a knife into me. Um, and I just, there was no, no relief from it at all. So. The visit with the doctor, I believe, was January 11th. Yep. Share with us what he said and then how that just change everything it seems like moving forward so i've been seeing doctors for many many years and some of the treatments were extensive but nothing was really working um, it was keeping things at bay really um, and for this mass i really was just so hopeful that i was able to go to this one final doctor like this was the very last straw if you will there were no other options. Um, so I went to this physician uh, to discuss removing this mass that they ha had found um, at the, my lower back. And being in there, he, he took a look at me and he's like, you're just gonna have to decide that you're going to accept that you and pain are gonna be buddies for life. That there is no removing this and there is no cure but I wasn't letting that stop me. <laughs> no, she didn't. In fact, she called me and said, I'm not accepting that. Although you do have respect for doctors. I do, very you, much. And you do have, um, you believe in using medicines. Mm -hmm. You know, we believe God has provided uh, the wisdom and the knowledge to produce those things, but you were not, you weren't gonna settle on what the doctor said. No. And that's what, that, I mean, that hit me. And when I got the phone, I was like, okay, she's got faith. She's got faith. She, and, and you also said, <laughs> praise the Lord. That was the time where you also told me whether I get healed or not, I'm going to keep serving God. Mm -hmm. Well, about like, so here's kind of like my perspective of this moment too. It was about the week it was at that same week or a few days later they had you had one the one night for a blaze and she's in the kids room and she's leading worship and i know that she's in pain i know that the floor over there is hard tile as well and so she is she is really worshiping and praising god through her pain you know what i'm talking about those of you who have been in physical pain you choose to worship god no matter what <clears throat> and i was so inspired by her worship and Honestly, something in me just kind of broke. And I said, Lord, heal this, heal this amazing woman of God who is serving you in spite of her trial, in spite, in spite of her pain. And I sat there, you know, just watching you, trying to get the kids into it. And they were, you were going around the room praising and worshiping. And I knew that she was gonna pay for that physically for the following days after that night. And I just pray God heal. And then, um, yeah, you kept, you kept praying for healing as well. I did. And that brings us to, you can say you know, anything there, but that brings us to the, to the day. Yeah, so my husband and I have um, stood on the scripture, Hebrews 13, 8, where it was, God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And over the course of our marriage, we have seen him move in so many ways, so many miracles. 
and we knew that he was the same God. And I want to also bring, I became a Christian when I was 10 because I saw right in front of me my sister be healed on her deathbed of a brain tumor that was inoperable. So I knew that God was a healer and I believed that he could heal me. So I just continued to just stand on that scripture and on the way home from that doctor, I just told my husband, I said, you know, I'm still going to serve. I'm disappointed, I'm hurt, I'm angry. I have to you know, process this for a minute, but I'm still gonna stand on the faith that I have that God is my healer, whether it be this side of heaven or next. And I just really just got to a point where I said, you know what, God, I'm still going to serve you. I am still going to serve these kids. I'm still going to do what you have called me to do, regardless of whether you heal me now or you heal me later. And so we continued on, you know, throughout the the next week, just doing what we normally do. And um, the 23rd of January was actually the last time that I had any medication. I, I brought some with me today. So I have Humira, okay? I was maxed out on Humira. I'd have to inject myself with this every Sunday. Um, this, this pen is actually you know, supposed to be given every two weeks, but because of the pain, I had to take it weekly. Uh, I also was on methotrexate. I was maxed out on this as well, so I was taking eight tablets a week. Um, just to keep the pain at bay. Two weeks before um, the day that God healed me, they tried to lower the dosage of both of, of these medications and we couldn't do it. The pain was too severe and the stiffness just increased. The inflammation went out of control, so I stayed maxed out. The day of the healing started as any other day. Uh, but it was a little bit more intense than normal. Um, those that are in my Ablaze class would see that the week before I had started into a flare where I couldn't run around like I normally do, even if I wanted to. I had them come to me and that was extremely difficult for me, um, but it was very humbling at the same time. But they're like, are you okay? You're not your normal self. And so I was able to be real with them and I was able to just be vulnerable with them. We were talking about the miracles of God, and we were able to just share in that, you know, with them. And um, so this particular Sunday, I had been a week dealing with this flare, and the pain had gotten so bad that I cried the whole morning getting ready for church. But I was not going to let that pain stop me from coming and serving. So I would get ready for church, and I would basically be being held up by my husband as we walked in. And we usually sit over here in like the third, fourth pew back. And um, I sat down for some of the worship just because it hurt so bad to stand. And during worship, the Lord just asked me to stand. He says, rise up. So I got up and I'm praising with every ounce of strength that I have. I'm just giving him everything I have, surrendering everything to him, and just not wanting to be hindered by anything. I just wanted to be in his presence. And we were singing the song, Same God, which is just so profound to me. That's a scripture that we have stood on for so many years, and we're singing that song. We're in the middle of worship, And I hear the Lord tell me, trust me and come. (laughs) So I press in and I said, I'm here. And so he he said again, come. So I just pressed in more and I'm just, I'm begging him like, God, just please just heal me of this pain. Heal me so that I can serve in the way that you have called me to serve and be able to do the things with my children that I so desire to do, you know? And and so in that moment, he touched me and I felt this intense warmth go through my entire body. The Holy Spirit camped out where the pain is usually the severest. And in that moment, it was the most intense heat that I have ever felt in my life, but it was the most beautiful feeling. And 
camped there for a minute, and then it tr the, the, the warmth traveled down my legs, shot out my toes, and as soon as it was gone, immediately I knew that I had been healed. I had no pain. Amen. Praise God. So in that moment, I just began to praise God. I'm laughing, I'm crying, and I just, I, I grabbed a hold of my husband, and I said, we need to go to the altar, and we need to go right now. He's like, okay, so he didn't know yet. <laughs> so we get down to the altar, and I tell him, and instantly he hit his knees. It, it took him to his knees. This is something we've been praying for for many, many years. And I got basically flat on the, on the floor. I couldn't do that before. I couldn't even barely get to the floor before. Um, but I was straight, like flat on the floor, face to the floor, just praising God and, and just so grateful for what he had just done. Yeah, and to, to be, praise God, yes. <laughs> Thank the Lord. And, and to be honest with you too, like you, you were actually you know, kneeling down with your forehead touching the ground, mm -hmm. something that you could not do. I'd never done in my life. Never. And so real quick, I'm over here worshiping and I sense that God wanted to heal you because we have been interceding for you ever since that doctor's report. Mm -hmm. And I, I wasn't happy with that either. No offense to him, I just was like, God gets the final word here. Amen. God, not no mankind, no pastor gets the final word. God gets the final word. And so I was like, let's keep interceding. And I'm over here worshiping and God's like, I'm gonna heal Jenny today. I'm like, okay. Uh, <laughs> and he was like, pray for her. And so I'm worshiping, I got my eyes closed. I look, she's, she's not down the altar. And I was like, well, if, if she comes down, God, I'll pray for her. And I opened my eyes again uh, during the same God song, and you're down the altar on your knees. And Gloria here is one of our prayer team leaders, and I walk up to her and I said, hey, God wants to heal Jenny today. Let's go pray for her. And I just said that with faith as well. And I go over to you, and I go to pray for you, and she looks up to me and she goes, God healed me today. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> like, uh, yeah. I was like, I didn't even pray for you yet. <laughs> yeah, I was totally confused because she said past tense. Yeah. And I just, wanted, I just want to encourage in this room, because we're, we're going to pray. We're going to get ready to gather around the altars. We're going to worship and we're going to pray. So just begin to set your mind toward, towards what do you need prayer for. Begin to think about that. Begin to pray and have faith here because God wants to heal today. And so just keep in mind that no one touched her. No pastor came over her. No oil was put on her head. None of that. Instead, she's just worshiping, and she must have reached out and touched the hem of his garment during worship and was healed by the power of God. And that's amazing. Now, real quick, because we want to spend some time here praying, you know, uh, the changes in your life have been phenomenal. I, we have a picture of you doing planks, which is you know, a workout that not many of us can do, even if we're healthy. And it's definitely something that she, you, know, you weren't used to doing, but I believe we have a photo of you on the ground you know, with your arms, your elbows. Yeah, I there you go. I was battling and out with Will. Doing a little plank competition, <laughs> timing herself. You've been running on the beach, which is hard to do as well for anyone that has back issues or anything like that. Uh, you haven't had to take the meds, but there's something else too. We had, um, she had some previous x-rays and whatnot for her body. And so this past week, we actually been going through a whirlwind trying to get some new MRIs and x-rays done. And now why would we do that? Well, we wanna validate healings. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that would be, you know, that have done fake healing ministries, okay? And it's discouraging, and it's caused people not to believe. To be honest with you, it's caused people not to believe in healing. So we weren't doing this to get confirmation. We already knew she was healed. She's been a different person. 
We just, yeah. So there's a few things that could be revealed in a new test, and that's scoliosis. It could be the inflammation, which I cannot pronounce that word. Only you can. <laughs> and the mass. And so we got results this week, and what were they? Everything was gone. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Wow. Amen. That's our God. Amen. I think it's important that we have scripture in this because we're found, our, our lives are founded on the word of God and to have scriptural basis for this healing. And so I wanna close with that, if that's okay with you, and then you're gonna pray. Is there anything else you would like to share or say though to help us? I've just been so incredibly blessed to be able to do things with my kids, mm. you know, and just be able to run with them. You know, some of the things that you just take for granted. Um, but I, I, I also just wanted to share a word of hope. You know, the, I know what it's like, you know, living through this for 30 years. I know what it's like to just live day in and day out with this pain and, and not knowing if it was ever gonna end. And I know what it's like sometimes to feel forsaken. I know what it's like to sometimes wonder if you're forgotten. Um, but I just, I just wanna just spread the word of hope. Like don't, go, don't let go of your hope of the Lord. Um, stay steady in your faith and your trust in the God that has the word. He, he is the one that's in control and he has not forgotten you. Amen. Praise God. The title of this portion of scripture in Mark 5 is Jesus Heals in Response to Faith. And he was on his way to see Jairus' daughter who was dying. And on his way, Jesus is interrupted, a really good interruption with a woman who was bleeding for 12 years. So Mark 5, 24, Jesus went with him, with Jairus, and all the people followed, crowding around him. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors, and over the years she had spent everything she had to pay them, but she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. She had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Immediately the bleeding stopped. And she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Jesus, Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my robe? His disciples said to him, look at this crowd pressing around you. How can you ask who touched me? But he kept on looking around to see who had done it. Then the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> wow. Your suffering's over. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's done. It's finished. 